um, we have to go back beyond the actual time that we formed the Black Owls Organizing Committee. Our beginnings were actually before my time as a conscious revolutionary. They were back in the days of Howard Toll and uh, Whitesides and W.L. Nolan and, and all of these comrades who went before and set the tone for how we were to survive. Those are the ones that started the fights, uh, fighting the battles for us. Um, those are the ones that stood up, that first stood up and uh, said, we're not going to take this anymore. So on down through George and, and those of us that came from under George's wing and, and fought those battles, th that was the formation of the concept of Black Others because as BGF, as revolutionaries, our battle was always for the people, always. It was initially for Africans. Um, we fought in defense of Africans. In general, we fought in defense of all people of color, okay, all people of conscious. Um, and like I say, the beginnings of Black August began before we actually formed a even the notion of Black August. It began with the pain and the suffering and the assassinations, uh, the uh, you know the assaults by the guards, the assaults by racist inmates, uh, the lockdowns, the transfers, the strip sales all of the persecution that they took us through all of that uh, is like putting it's like putting meat in a pressure cooker it, it it all formed us into who we were and by the time it got to Katari Golden when they killed Katari that was the final straw for us and that's when we formed Black August Organizing Committee after they after they killed that comrade, it was just, it was like the last, last straw. So, the Black August Organizing Committee was formed to enlighten the community, make them aware of the things that were going on behind the walls, make them aware of how the racist guards were just killing um, African inmates at their whim how the racist guards were setting up uh, fights on the yard between the Mexican Mafia and Africans, between the Aryan Brotherhood and Africans, between the Nazi Party and Africans, uh, between the Animal Tribe and Africans. Everything designed to destroy us. The focus inside is to destroy the African. African uh, Africans in every, in every prison are those that are most conscious. I don't know how it works out that way, but it does. You know, people have many theories on that. But that's not something that we, um, we tended to dwell on. We knew that we were under attack. We knew we had to deal with the situation. We fought back. We fought uh, with our backs pressed against the wall, like Claude McKay says. Back pressed against the wall, dying but fighting back. That's the way we dealt with it. And Black August, the concept, came out of that. It came out of that tyranny. It came out of that degradation. It came out of that isolation because we were cut off from our families, from our friends, from everything that we loved and all those that loved us. We were cut off from the world. We couldn't just tell the newspapers, look at what they're doing to us because no one was listening. So we formed the Black August Organizing Committee to take on that challenge of getting that information out to the news agencies, to the people, actual people in the community, to enlighten them, to get them to understand 
and stand up for us and come up there and ask these wardens, what are you doing to him in there? Well, why is he, how, why did he die? Well, why is his leg broken? Well, why is his skull bashed in? Well, why do you have him welded into a cell for a year, uh, two years, and he can't come out and he can't see anybody and he can barely breathe in there? Why are you doing these things? Why are you calling them bullshit revolutionaries when all they're doing is standing up for themselves and those of like mind around them? They're standing up for all of these that you oppress. Why are you doing these things? That's what the Black Always Organizing Committee was about. That's what it's still about today. We have come from our formation in 1979 to day. We've gone through the persecution of the special services units who are prison ex-prison guards who act like police. They kick in doors. Uh, they, you know, they chain parolees' families to chairs while they harass the parolee, take him off, lock him up in jailhouses, wherever for uh, 10 days at a time and, you know, nobody knows where he's at. Uh, we, we lived through all of that. We lived through uh, most of the members of Black August Organizing Committee being either locked up in prison to this date or killed. I'm one of the few, the very few remaining uh, founding members of BAOC alive today. Um, I can think of maybe three others on the street. And you know we're in various parts of the country, and that's it. At one time, our membership was close to 60. Okay, out here on these streets, working. We all we had committees that dealt exclusively with particular issues: uh, prison crises, uh, police brutality, uh, uh, food and clothing for communities and families out here, expropriations. Um, and, and, you know, all sorts of things. And they were full committees, and that was their only chore. So you didn't have to overlap. But that was once upon a time. Now, the prison industrial complex, um, the California Correctional Peace Officers Association, which is the most powerful union in California, has made it their business to criminalize Black August. Everything we do now, they call a crime. When we do events, they say we're having, uh, we're doing these things. It's a criminal empire, a criminal enterprise to raise money for criminals who are locked up in prison and um, that they have to keep locked up because if they didn't keep them locked up, thousands of people in the street would be dying. They put these, these uh, documentaries on TV saying these things. They put, um, you know, they put articles out in, in uh, different magazines and stuff talking about uh, how dangerous uh, you know people that deal with black algas are. Every year, these brothers inside commemorate black algas. Every year, from the first of August to the thirty-first of August, they fast. On the first, thirteenth, uh, seventh, uh, twenty-first, uh, the twenty-sixth, they fast for twenty-four hours. On the other days, they fast from sunup to sundown. They study. They refrain from uh, you know anything to do with the canteen or commercialization or or, or any of that type of stuff. Um, the The goal is recommitment. The goal is self awareness. The goal is introspection. Okay, to turn inward and, and, and rededicate yourself to those things that began us, those things that started us on this path. It is to, to know the purpose of your journey. That's what it's about. So whenever these brothers commemorate, they're persecuted. They're locked down tighter. The ones on the main lines that commemorate Black August are put in the hole. The ones who are already in the hole are given more time in the hole. They use these excuses to say, this is why we're not letting you go home. 
um, the brothers that have been in there 30 and 40 years, these are the reasons that they, uh, they use. They say you are continuing to be involved in criminal activity by commemorating Black August. In other states, I get letters all the time from, from people in other states who have been transferred from one prison to the other because they helped to organize um, uh, and, 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 and commemorate Black August. One brother wrote me, one brother named Haki <clears throat> in, um, in Georgia. He had been transferred to two different prisons, and the reasoning was he organized 115 people to fast and commemorate Black August. No violence, education, reading, uh, teaching, that was it. Self-awareness, and they transferred him, okay? Um, Jamil Alameen, they just transferred Jamil Alameen from a prison in Georgia to a supermax prison in Colorado. This brother, when you write him a letter, he gets to see that letter on a computer screen. He doesn't get to touch it, okay? Um, the only physical contact that he has is looking at the guard's hands when he sticks a tray through the tray slot. He can't even see the guard, okay? Um, Jalil Muntakim, one of the San Francisco eight, they just transferred him to Colorado. Same thing. This brother is in supermax lockdown, and it's all the fear of what they might say that might spark somebody to do something, to rise up, to resist. That's what Black August resistance is. That's what Black August resistance does. It tries to get that message out there that you must resist. You must resist these street corners. You must resist the oppression of these police. You must resist going into these courtrooms and copping pleas and, and, and accepting this time in these jail house, houses. You have, we have to stop doing that. It's about resistance. It's about standing up to any form of oppression. It's about standing up to uh, the drugs, taking these drugs into your system. It's about, it's about resisting the urge to down 12 bottles of Cavassier just because you heard some rapper say this crap on the radio. It's about all of the things that you know are poison to us as a community. It's about resisting them. That's what Black August Resistance is. Black August is a cultural event. It's a cultural time to commemorate those that have gone before us, those who are still standing, and Dedicate yourself to working on stemming the tide of our youth from rushing up into these penitentiaries like it's the thing to do. You have these, these, these youngsters out here who just, they have no fear of going up in here. And they're bum-rushing these prison gates like, like they're, they're passing out candy in there. We have to resist that and it starts with all of us who know better. It starts with all of us who claim to be revolutionaries and are just claiming. We need to resist the urge to support these clowns who stand on stages and call themselves revolutionaries while passing you that bottle of Colossier. Okay? We know that's nonsense. You need to resist all these people who stand up on stage and talk about killing half the neighborhood and that's what makes them famous because I can kill all these people because I've been shot 50 times because I got diamonds in my asshole okay excuse my French or whatever but Black Hawkers resistance is about coming to the understanding that the community is first that the people are first that when you say I'm a soldier for the people you have to mean it Black Hawkers resistance is a time to make that commitment to stand up and do for other than you. Power to the people, long live the gorilla.